Another one of those low down stingy Yankees. I bet you that's the first time he's opened his purse this week. How can you always tell a Yankee when you see one, Juanette? Instinct, honey, instinct. Didn't you see the way he poked his northern nose around Celine's food? You'd never see no southern quality folks doing that. Maybe he wouldn't be a Yankee if he could help it. Goodness, child, who would? my ballet dancers, do you, Philip? But they won't dance for me. Oh, they would if they knew you better. I may have to give them away someday. You don't know anybody who would like to take care of them, do you? I reckon I do, Father. I take awful good care of them. And will you be kind to them too, Lily Bell? Ouch! Oh, yes, I forgot, Father. Lily Bell's got a bulge on his head. They kicked me and they drowned me and my brains is bulging out. My, my, why are your clothes are soaking wet? Here, let me see what the trouble is. Ouch! There, now, Lily Bell. I hope I have enough salve left. I had to use most of it on Francis and Anthony just a little while ago. Seems the poor boys were set upon by some vicious little heathen who got the better of them in a brick fight. My, wasn't that sinful. Hmm. In a 
funny thing, too, according to what they said. This little heathen looked very much like you, Lily Bell. Why, Father, every little pickaninny in New Orleans looks like me. I ain't seen Anthony or Francis for a week or more. Well, I'm glad of that, Lily Bell, because fighting is a terrible sin, but not telling the truth is even worse. Yes, sir, Father. Oh, uh, by the way, Philip, I missed you at choir practice yesterday. Oh, we went fishing for catfish down by the levee. Ouch! You heard what Father said about telling the truth, and I gotta tell the truth. Well, you don't have to go tell the truth for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Father, but I already know my hymn. Fanny taught it to me on the banjo. On the banjo? Yes. She played it kind of slow and holy-like, and it really sounded beautiful. Yes, I'm sure it did. Philip, you never forget to mention Toinette in your prayers, as I told you, do you? No, Father. She's good to you, Philip. You're too young to know just how good Toinette has been to you. I don't ever forget. Ah, there, Lily Bell, I think that will do. Now, let me see. Well, I don't seem to have a banjo around, but... Do you think you could manage your hymn with the organ? I reckon an organ will do just as well, Father. And I pump? Yes, Lily Bell, I think you may pump. I should have you learn all the hymns with a banjo. What's the matter with you now, Lily Bell? I don't repent, Father. I've been lied about Anthony and Francis, but they started the fight. You're quite sure of that? Yes, sir, Father. And you promise not to do it again? Yes, sir, Father. I promise. Amen. Very well, then. Run along. And Philip, be at choir practice tomorrow. Catfishing can wait. Yes, Father. Thanks for fixing Isabel's head. You and your saint, you remain me tell on myself. <laughs> I'll go long. The time is never weary, if the darky never grows. The ladies never weary. When he rattles on the then come again, Susanna. But I guess I love you more. We'll come to your piano. When the band goes out of tune, ring, ring the banjo. I like that good old song. Come again, my true love. Oh, why you bring me so long? 
the bubbles while the water's in the spring. The dark is no trouble. Good evening, Twinette. Oh, oh, good evening, Father. I hope Philip hasn't been misbehaving. Oh, no, we thought you were little bit. Oh, we're so glad you ate. Won't you sit down, Father? Thank you, Twinette. Thank you. Oh, speaking of Jefferson Davis, Christopher Columbus, Lily Bell Jones, I'm worried about him. Philip, would you run along and see how his head is mending? I have to help Twinette with the dishes. We're going down to the levee for the singing tonight. You do what Father Joseph tells you. We's going there later on. Here. Put your coat on. You mean you don't need me to help you with it? Annette needs any help, she can tie an apron around me. Now you run along, my boy. <laughs> Good night, Father. Good night, Philip. I suppose you know what I want to talk to you about. Oh, everybody pounds me about that boy. Celine, she's been harping on it this afternoon. Nobody leaves me in peace. Master Philip is doing all right. I've got my plans made for him, Father save my money, and pretty soon I'm going to send him to a white folks school of quality. He's growing up to be a, a gentleman, maybe a doctor or a lawyer. He's going to be rich. No, it's something more than that. The boy must have some people somewhere. Everyone can't have been wiped out. Twinette, you know who his people are. There's lots of children left like him. Up in the country, whole towns was burnt down. I just pick him up a little baby, like so many of them was. I don't know nothing about his people, Father. The courthouse was burnt down and all the records gone. Twinette, you belonged to the de Traver family, didn't you? The de Traver? I never heard that name before. That's strange. The name de Traver is over the gate to this place. You walk under it every day. Is that so? The de Traver's daughter, Marguerite, married Philip Ainsworth. What you know about them Yankees? How do you know they're Yankees, Twinette? Oh, me? I, well, uh, I, I don't know. But I just ain't never heard no such name in the South before. I understand your loyalty to the South. Your fear for Yankees. But I think that Philip... Father, you ain't got it in your mind that my Philip belongs to no Yankees, has you? I have, Twinette. Oh, no. No, Father. I have a letter here. I've addressed it to Mrs. Harriet Ainsworth of New York City. What's that letter say? Not much. Nothing that is positive proof. But I'm writing to her that I have reason to believe that her son's child is here. Her son, Philip Ainsworth, married Marguerite de Traver. He fought in the Southern Army and was killed. I hoped I could add to the letter that a faithful, devoted slave to the de Traver family had cared for the baby Philip with the love of a mother, and that now she was ready to corroborate my story. I ain't got no truck in her, Yankee. I don't know nothing about no Ainsworth. Master Philip, he was born here. He belongs here, and he's going to be blown up something. I've been called back to Rome. My work here is done. I shan't come back. Before I leave, I want to fulfill my duty to Philip. I must mail this letter. Good night, Willie. Good night.
with you tonight, Tony? I was worried about a letter Father Joseph done wrote. What business is it of yours if he writes a letter? Oh, I ain't worried because he write a letter. I was worried whether he done mailed it or not. The trouble with you is, you ain't got your words organized. I never worry except on Thursday. All week long, I say it's my words till Thursday. That's my worrying day. I sat down and worried. And when I was all done, I know I was all through till next Thursday. That might work for regular worries. But it won't work for the load I got. Waiting for the sun to rise. We are waiting for the sun to rise. Waiting for the sun to rise. We are waiting for the sun to rise. Waiting for the sun to rise. Waiting for the sun to rise. Help you, Mrs. Ainsworth? No, thank you. Every morning you ask me if you may help me, and every morning I tell you no. Do I look as if I needed help? Uh, no, Mrs. Ainsworth. Well, don't do it again. Yes, Mrs. Change places. I'm sorry, Mrs. Andrews, but I was requested to take this animal for a stroll. Is that animal of more importance than I am? Yes, Mrs. Andrews. I mean, no, Mrs. Andrews. You see, I thought I left the door a wee bit ajar. That's just it. Contrary to all my instructions. Don't do it again. Yes, Mrs. Andrews. I mean, no, Mrs. Andrews. Shall I tell Miss Lucille she may have the carriage now? Carriage? What for? Uh, Miss Lucille's going to an afternoon party, Mrs. Andrews. When I was her age, I walked. Yes, of course, madam. Oh, tell her she can have the carriage. Yes, madam. Will you be going to your room, Mrs. Ainsworth? To my room? What for? I'm not an invalid. Do I look like an invalid? No, Mrs. Ainsworth. I'll bring the tea and toast into the library. Yes, Mrs. Ainsworth. Wish you'd hurry, Mother. I don't want to be late. Now, Lucille, darling, I'm doing my best. There are only two more. Besides, Aunt Harriet isn't back with the carriage yet. And I told Aunt Harriet particularly that I had to go to this party. Now, don't get all upset. You want to look your prettiest, don't you? But well, why doesn't she have some consideration for other people? We must remember, if it weren't for Aunt Harriet, we wouldn't have a carriage at all. Come in. The carriage is ready for Miss Lucille. Well, you see. Well, it's about time. Now get Fluff ready for the party. Be sure to put that ribbon on him. Oh, darling, don't you think you'd better not take Fluff? He'll only be troublesome. I want to take him. Now, Lucille, dear, be sure and say goodbye to Auntie and thank her for the carriage, just as Mother told you. I'll thank her. Here's Fluff. Now, please, dear, leave Fluff at home. Mother will buy you that nice pink dress with the ruffles you saw yesterday. And the hat, too? Yes, dear, and the hat, too. All right. Here, Barrett, you may take Fluff's coat off. And give him a small piece of biscuit and just one caramel. Yes, Mrs. Steele. Don't forget to say goodbye to Auntie. I told you. 
you I would. I've come to thank you, Auntie, for letting me have the carry. I hope you didn't hurry back just in front of me. Hurry back? Huh. I forgot you wanted the carriage. Do you like my dress, Auntie? Why don't you take off that fur piece? Oh, I think it looks so pretty with my dress. See? Please, may I wear it, Auntie? Oh, go on, go on, if you want to smother yourself to death. Oh, thank you, Auntie. If Auntie says no, I'm sure she knows best, dear. Goodbye, Auntie, dear. Oh, run along, run along. Wrong, aren't you? Oh, no, nothing wrong. Just some busybody getting exercised over a matter that doesn't concern me anymore. What matter? What is it? Margaret de Traver. Oh. Wasn't that the name of Cousin Philip's wife? That was the name of a southern woman, your cousin Philip married. But she died a long time ago, didn't she? In a fire or something? Yes. 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 Well, Philip made his own choice took her people in preference to his own, and then fought for the South. Now this priest <laughs> writes to ask me if Philip ever had a child. He seems to think that a foundling down there is my grandson. Rubbish. If Philip had ever had a child, I'd have known it long before this, wouldn't I? Of course I'd have known it. Go on, read it. So they say there are lots of children down there they'd like to find homes for any number of them. Well, let the rebels take care of the rope. Well, what are you going to do about it? Do? Why, nothing, of course. What do you suppose I'm going to do? I think you're absolutely right. After all, goodness knows what the child may be. As usual, Julia, your advice is wrong. The matter will have to be investigated. Oh, I suppose I'll have to go down there and see. Good morning, Auntie. How do you feel? Did you sleep well? The way I feel and the way I sleep is my own business. What's the matter with dear Aunt Harriet? If I hadn't jerked my head back, she'd have snapped it off. There's plenty of the matter. Hmm? There's disturbing news from the South. It seems my cousin Philip left her son. Well, I'll be done. So Lucille has a little southern cousin, eh? But do you think it's a fact a or... fact or no fact, there's a chance it may be true. Aunt Harriet hasn't accepted it yet. But she's already got it into her head to go down there and investigate. And if it is true... What, do you want Lucille to be left penniless? No, but still... Well, don't be an idiot about it. You're so easygoing, just stand there and say, well, let everything take its natural course. As a matter of fact, that's just what I was going to say. And there you are. You see, I know what's in your mind before you do. Yeah, that's one of the disadvantages of being married. Now, listen. Before Aunt Harriet gets any further about going away, you go and talk with her. Tell her you'd go instead. She'd hate the journey anyway. But don't you tell her I put you up to it. Yes, I could do that. And I need a vacation. You're not going for the vacation. I wonder if you know what you are going for. Sure. To get the boy. Oh, my heaven, give me patience. You're going down there to prove that the boy is not what the priest suspects. Now, is that clear? You mean... Oh, yes. That's the place. Wait for me. Yes. Arnett! Father Joseph wants you and Philip to come right away. What for he want us? He sent me for you. There's a gentleman comes there in a carriage. Come on, Philip Charles. Yes, this is a copy from the court record. A bill of sale showing that Toinette was bought by the Detraver family. She belonged to them. And my cousin married into this family. Yes. 
But after all, this is just circumstantial evidence. Are there no de Travers left? No. They're all dead, except Quinette, who belonged to them. Well, you better not show a thing like this to Mrs. Ainsworth. Human chattels. She'd have an apoplectic fit. You sent for me, Father Joseph? Yes, Trinette. Come in. Isn't Philip with you? I sent him to the vestry to get ready for the choir. And then I told him to come right over. Well, Mr. Layton, this is Trinette. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Sit down, Trinette. Mr. Layton is a cousin of the late Philip Ainsworth. Oh. He's come down here to talk with you about Philip. Twinette, there's no use for you to deny that you belong to Marguerite de Traven. You love Philip, don't you, Twinette? But for you ask such questions, Father, you know I love him. And if you love him, you must think of his future. You mustn't try to keep him from his own family. They can give him everything in life, everything Philip should have. I, I don't know who his people is. Each time you say that, Twinette, the falsehood in it shows up more and more. Does it, Father? You know that you can say the word that would give Philip back to his family. It was three or four years before you come here, Father. Yes, Twinette. It was the night of the fire. And all the men gone to war. I saved the baby. But I couldn't save my mistress, Miss Marguerite. She died in the fire. Then the news come that Miss Marguerite's husband was killed in the war. And when old Master de Traver died from bear in the war, I took love, Master Philip, and run away. I tried to stay away, but I had to come back home. I, I can't tell no more, Father. <laughs> Evidently, there can be no question about it. He'll have a good home, Jeanette. But you all, his neck is up there. He doesn't look like a no good, does he, Twinette? No, he feels all right. You show his grandma's all right, too. Poor Twinette. <laughs> she can't believe there can be two good Yankees. I'm sorry. You all have to excuse me. <laughs> but, Twinette, you're crying. This gentleman is your kinfolks, baby. Kinfolks? Yes. Father Joseph done found out you got kinfolks. And, and you has another name. Your name is... Oh, oh, it don't sound so Yankee. If and you say it right, it's Ainsworth. And, and it's got a grandma, baby. Okay. Yes. Way up in New York City. And this gentleman is going to take you up there. Do you, do you think I should go to one Oh, Oh, of course, baby. He's going to live in a big house and have everything and be a gentleman and have a pie and a... Ain't you all got a pie and a, Mr. Layton?
where my grandmother lives? Yes. It's just like a palace. Yes. Mr. Layton, I've been wondering, how many people live in this town? You ask more questions. Almost a million and a half, Sonny. And all Yankees, I reckon. Oh, welcome back, Mr. Layton. I trust you had a pleasant trip. Yeah. Indeed, uh, I'm very glad to hear that. I'll help you. <laughs> The train only takes three and a half days now, so I thought I'd surprise you. Did you get everything settled? Uh, well, to tell the truth, I... I, I... Well, who in the name of goodness is this? Where should I put my bag, sir? Put it on the floor. Julie, this is Philip. Philip, this is Mrs. Layton. How do you do? And this is Lucille. How do you do? out of the way. Ralph, I'd like to talk to you privately. No, run along, dear. What I have to say to your father is not for little girls' ears. Ralph! You go and talk to the little boy. You've got to say for yourself. What are you doing here, anyhow? I'm supposed to live here. Can you tell me any reason why you should? Well, Mrs. Ainsworth is my grandmother. That's ridiculous. She's my own aunt. If she had any other relations, she'd have told me about them. <laughs> have you got a dog? Have I got a dog? He's the most beautiful canine in New York. I guess you never saw a dog like him before. Oh, I like dogs. Could I see him? Well... I guess so. Come on. It's a wonderful pedigree. Has it? Where is it? Well, I don't know where it is. Well, then how do you know he's got one? All high-class dogs have pedigrees. My friend Lillibelle has the best dog in the world, and he hasn't got one. But he does tricks. Can your dog do any? Can he? Just watch. Look, get up. Look, you hear? Sit up. Maybe he's tired. No, he's hungry. Oh, would you be gentleman enough to get that box of caramels? Is that what he eats? Certainly. He's a very genteel dog. Well, why do they put it way up there? Oh, I can't get it. Come on, get up here. Your story's absurd. How could you bring that urchin here? My dear, it was quite evident. I made the greatest mistake of my life and I let you go down there. The second mistake. Come in. Oh, Mrs. Ainsworth has returned, Mrs. Layton. Now what are we going to do? Well, Julia, I've done my best. Do anything you want. So you're back? Yes, Auntie. Just back. Well, what's the matter? You look like a naughty little boy caught stealing the jam. What did you find out? Well, uh... You see, Auntie Ralph is so sentimental. He's so easily taken in by people. How has he been taken in? He brought the boy back without any proof. What? Well, Auntie, you see, it's like this. I thought the boy was your grandson. And why? Well, the colored woman who's looked after him since his birth, she said... Never mind what she said. What did you find out? What proof? What papers? What documents? A certificate of birth? Anything? The only proof he has is what the colored woman told him. Yes, but Julia, I took her word. You have the brains of a mouse. I've always suspected it. Now I know it. But the boy sings beautifully. You fool! Don't give me any further proof of your asininity. I've had enough. You certainly have been taken in. Huh. Well, where is the boy? Upstairs. Something must have happened to Lucille. Oh. I 
you my grandmother? Grandmother Fiddlesticks. Whoever told you I was your grandmother? Oh, Father Joseph told one then. That's the colored woman, Aaron. I want to speak to you two in the library. Clean up this mess. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm not. Nor am I losing sight of the fact that the boy is Philip Ainsworth's son. Oh, you are a cold, heartless man. You're not eating. You know, Toinette said I was going to my grandma's. Somebody must have made a mistake. Well, I don't know what it is all about. I'm sure everything will turn out all right, though. Go ahead and try to eat a little. Scott. Oh, they're my white mice. Father Joseph gave them to me. They can dance. Well, Father, you, I keep them out of sight. Thank you. Do you think you could get them something to eat, Mr. Uh, uh... Uh, Barrett? Oh, yes, Mr. See, Barrett. What would they eat? Say, how about a little squab? No, that might spoil them. I think they'd like some cheese. Have you got them? Oh, yes, we have a very nice stove, a nice ripe rope for Here's cheese. I'll get them a little of each. Now you go ahead and eat. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Good evening, Master Phil. I thought I'd better come up and show you just how to turn out the gas. Occasionally, people who aren't used to this modern convenience are inclined to blow it out like it was a lamp. Well, the results are usually more or less fatal. Now, if you'll just get in bed, I'll show you how it's done. Thank you. Now watch me. You see, it's very simple. Well, good night, Master Philip. Good night. Oh, Mr. Barrett. Yes? Uh, well, uh, I was wondering. Wondering? Uh, about what? You know, ever since I was a little boy, Twanet came in to hear my prayers. And, and you know how it is. It's Sort of like a habit. Well, I'll be glad to accommodate. Oh, thank you. You kneel, too. Oh, I beg your pardon. 
Do you want to stop, or shall I stop? Maybe you'd better. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. bunches, please. Thank you. Goodbye. Come here. What are you doing? Where'd you get those? In your garden. Don't you realize that no one is allowed to pick the flowers in my garden? Oh, I'm sorry. Making I a spectacle of yourself peddling in the street? What did you do it for? Well, to make some money. Money? <laughs> what do you want any money for? I thought maybe I could pay you for the vase I built. I got a quota already. That's no excuse for ruining my garden. Now you leave my flowers alone. Yes, ma'am. And go on, and get in the house immediately. Yes, Mrs. Anderson. I don't know what your room is going to be next. things upstairs, to the boys' room. Auntie, are you buying clothes for Philip? He has to have some new clothes to make him presentable if we're going to ask somebody to adopt him. It is really beautiful, isn't it? Yes, sir, I'm afraid you'll break the hearts of all those little ladies at Miss Lucille's party tomorrow. Do you think they'll let me play my banjo at the party? Of course they will. You know, I've always wanted to learn to play an instrument, for my own amusement, of course. I'll teach you. What, me play the banjo? I'm afraid I couldn't. Oh, it's easy. I'll show you. Sit down. You really think you can? Sure. Now put your fingers up here. Put your little thing over here. Now, click it. Hey, I almost did it. Almost. Watch me. The Camp Town lady sing this song. Do da, do da. The Camp Town race track five miles long. Oh, do da day. Want to run all night. Want to run all day. I'll bet my money on the bobtail nag. Somebody bet on the bay. Yes, Miss Lucy. 
Garfield. So there you are. I've been looking all over for you. What is it, please? I want to know if everything has been attended to for my birthday party. It's tomorrow, you know. I'm quite sure that everything's been attended to. I think you'd be positive, instead of wasting your time with this little rebel. Who's a rebel? Now, now, let's all be ladies or gentlemen, or both. You take that back or I'll smack you. Huh? It's smack a lady. Well, I won't take it back. I'm going to report you to my mother. And just for that, you can't come to my party either. And another thing, I'll see to it that you won't go with us to Barnum's Museum tonight. Don't you worry, you and I will go to Barnum's Museum someday. Just you and I. Oh, I don't care if I don't go to Barnum's Museum. But I did want to go to the party. And I heard so much about Barnum's Museum. I never heard of anybody going to a museum at night. Ah, but this is different, my dear. This is Barnum's Museum. It's all full of freaks and things. <laughs> Funny things. Ready, my cloak? Thank you. Ready? Excuse me, Mrs. Ainsworth. Why? How bothered you? I'm used to being bothered. But you didn't. Come over here. Come on. Sit down. Sit down. This Toinette never told you anything about your parents until a short time ago, did she? No, ma'am. No. Not until the priest had interested himself. Hmm? I reckon not. Toinette was quite poor, wasn't she? Well, we had chicken once a week. Don't you think it's strange she kept it from you if she knew who your parents were? I don't know. I, I never thought about it. What did she tell you about your father? She said my father was quality folk. Was he your boy? Why'd you want to leave the South? Didn't you like it down there? Oh, I didn't want to leave. I sure used to have a lot of fun. <laughs> what fun can you have down there? Oh, picking flowers and selling them, and catching catfish, and playing on the levee, and singing. I reckon I like the singing best of all. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't pick flowers down here, you know. And you can't catch any fish. But you can sing, can't you? I could, but you've got to feel like singing before you can sing. Don't you know any other songs except that flower song? Oh, yes, ma'am. I know lots. Oh. Ava Maria, The Lord's Children, Suwannee River. I think that's the first one when I taught me. How'd it go? Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. That's not singing, that's just speaking of peace. There's one my heart 
to do you thinking and worrying about that Philip all the time. I ain't worrying. I was joyful. I was just thinking what a good time my Philip is having. You can't fool me. You was worrying yourself into the grave about him. I sure wish I could get rid of that Lily Bell so easy. Maybe Father Joseph was here, he could rake him up a grandmother someplace. Oh, I know it's for the best. But I wouldn't wish you no such luck. Good indeed. Last time you went to bed, Jim. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Angel. and cake. You can have a little party of your own. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Now, children, your little hostess will entertain you on the piano.
Give me that. Please don't. That's my banjo. <laughs> what is all this? What is it? He's disturbing Lucille's party, sitting up here singing and playing that thing. Why isn't he playing that thing downstairs with the other children? Won't you come downstairs and entertain Lucille's guests? Well, I don't mind. Come on, Philip. This boy will sing for you, if you wish. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nasty little mice frighten me to death. I wish you'd get them out of here. Just watch me. into a menagerie. How long do you think that you can go on breaking up my things like this? I think I'd better go to my room. I should say so. <laughs> better clean up this mess. Yes, ma'am. Got yourself into something this time. Well, you don't have to worry, do you? I can stand it. Maybe you wouldn't think so. You know what I do? Somebody's going to be putting an orphan asylum. And what's more, we drown those awful mice of yours.
I'm leaving. And where do you think you're going? I'm going back to Toinette. Oh, no, you're not. The only place you're going is back up there to your room. But I don't want to go to my room. Well, you're going anyway. Mrs. Layton, I beg your pardon, but I wouldn't do that. You've already done enough to that boy. How dare you speak to me like that? Mrs. Barrett, have you forgotten yourself? No, sir, I haven't. What's going on here? What is all this? What is it? This ungrateful boy is trying to run away. If I were in his place, madame, I'd do the same thing. Oh, oh Aunt Harriet, you're not going to allow a servant. Yes, surely, Aunt Harriet. Certainly sure. not. No butler in my employ can talk to me like that. You're discharged. Please, Mrs. Ainsworth. Now that you're no longer in my employ, if you've anything to say, say it. Well... Well, go ahead, talk. I'm sure you don't realize what's been going on behind your back. Behind my back? What's been going on behind my back? No, please, don't be have a Well, go on, Barrett, go on. You see, the entire household's been against this boy ever since he came here. Now, I think he should be allowed to go back home. It's all wrong. And when I think about his white mice, well, that was the last straw. What about his white mice? Let me explain. We simply had to drown them. You drowned this child's pets. How courageous. But you don't understand him. They offended Lucille. As a matter of fact, ever since this boy has been in the house, he's offended Lucille. Everything's offended Lucille. And Lucille offends me. And you too. And you. Well, have you anything more to say, Barrett? No, I think that's all, ma'am. Very well, then. You are re-engaged. Oh, thank you. If this man stays, we go. This man stays. It is all wrong, Barrett. I've been thinking so for some time. Tell Bernice to pack my things and pack your own. You're going with me and Philip. Where are we going? Oh, yes. You said you wanted to see Toinette, didn't you? Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, so do I. It seems you've made your third mistake. Oh. Getting so that nobody can sleep in this house. Nothing has to be done about that bullet. I want so much to see my Philip once more before I pass his on. You ain't going to die. Mm -hmm. Ain't I put the rabbit's foot right where the sickness is? Mm -hmm. Where's that sass grass? Mm -hmm. Here, drink this. <sighs> now, don't you worry, you ain't going to die. Because when I say you can't die, you can't die. Mm -hmm. well, I'll be back tonight. You keep it nice and warm. Uh, put a hot brick in her bed. Uh, oh. Uh, here's the ass bag. You can use that, too. <clears throat> What's the matter with her anyhow, Doctor? I don't know. I just ain't got the diagnosis figured out exactly. It might be the liver and it might be the lungs. And again, it might be a heart. That's what it is, Doctor, just grieving about that boy. Is she gonna die? Oh, she's a goner. But you said that she when was... When I say she dies, she dies. Who's the doctor around here anyway? All right, all right. But if she dies, I was gonna give her the best it's funeral you all have ever had. You won't have to wait long. <laughs> Yes. 
am I his grandmother, Toinette? So I am. Who's crying? Don't be silly. Little boys, I said silly questions always. Is you one of them Yankees? What's the matter? Don't you like the Yankees? No, sir. Didn't you ever hear of Abraham Lincoln? Hear of him? Why, that's me. I was Abraham Lincoln, Stonewall, Jackson, George Washington, Lady Bell Jones. Bye. That woman got well mighty bad. Naturally, I was the doctor. And we was gonna give her the bestest funeral New Orleans ever had. 